Welcome to this tutorial video. In today's tutorial, we're essentially going to be going over how to use Blender and Godot together in what I think to be a rather good workflow. That said, if you have other workflows or you use other things to get the two to play nicely together, I highly recommend that you leave a comment down below so other people can take a read and hear what you have to say. This is all a collaborative experience after all. So let's jump into it, shall we? So let's just get Godot up and running right out of the gate. So got Godot here, we'll go new project and we'll just put a project path in here, Blender practice, and we'll say mobile. And we'll go create and edit. And this is going to then open up our Godot project. So now that we've got our Godot project up and running, let's now go about creating an asset that we can use inside Blender. So inside Blender, let's say that we want to have a level, so to speak. Let's just create a very quick level. Uh, you know what, I, I'm gonna keep the cube. I'm just gonna go tab, down, scale, something like that. And let's maybe add in a another box on top here as well. And we'll put that off to the side. Cool. Let's then just clean up our clutter here and name this. We'll call this floor and we'll call this ob for obstacle. Wonderful. So if we were to export this from Blender into Godot right now, let's just do that. Go file, export, gltf glb because that is the file format that Godot really wants. Then what we'll do now is we'll go to Godot and we'll get the file directory by right clicking in here, open file manager, and then we can just copy and paste the directory name from here. And we can paste that into our blend here. And then we'll save this as level, for example. Now, we could go over includes, for example, limit to selected objects or visible objects uh, at this time, but we're gonna leave everything as default for now, just to kind of showcase what goes on. We're gonna export this, and then we're gonna go over to Godot, and we should see a little pop-up. The larger the file, the longer that pop-up will stay, but we do have a level.glb in our scene. Now, before we move on to the rest of the tutorial, I would like to talk a little bit about today's sponsor. Me. Storytelling is the cornerstone of human communication. And as time has marched ever onwards, the mediums in which we tell tales has changed and shifted. In this digital world, a lot of stories are told via films and games. But unfortunately, a lot of storytellers these days are not equipped to tell such tales, even if they wanted to. And that's where polyfable.com comes in. It's a platform that I have designed and contribute to that aims to help storytellers learn these complex softwares and techniques from the perspective of a fellow storyteller. Now, currently we only have tutorials, levels and courses on Blender, and these are still being added to as well, but we plan on increasing our offerings going forward as well. So if you are interested in telling stories and you want to contribute and help this channel out, I highly recommend you head over to polyfable.com. Back to the tutorial. You might be tempted to just drag and drop this into the scene as is. I would recommend not doing that. So what we want to do now is we want to right click on this and create a new inherited scene. We then want to save this scene and we'll save it as level as well. Save. So now what's gonna happen is anytime we update this GLB, this level scene will also update as well. This is really good because let's say we have our main scene, let's actually create a new scene. We'll say new scene, we'll create main. Now this is where our, our game logic would be, for example. We'll say main and we can now drag level scene under main. Perfect. So. Let's now update the Blender file and showcase, well, let's how, how can we then propagate that through? So instead of having one obstacle, I want two obstacles. So let's duplicate that with Shift and D and put it over here. Now I'm gonna go back to File, Export, 
GLTF or GLB, and I'm going to overwrite level GLB export. So then coming back over to, to Godot, we should see that that little pop up again. And once more, we're now seeing our second cube here, which is fantastic. Okay, great. So we've shown that we can import an We've shown that we can export from Blender and we can iteratively update a file within Godot. We just wanted to make sure that we made a inherited scene from the GLB so it's not reading from the GLB directly. Now then, let's create a character. So we're going to create a new scene and we'll call this character. And let's actually, let's base it off a character controller. Character body 3D and let's go OK. We'll attach a script to it and we'll just call this character create. Now, when you attach a script to a character object, it will come with a preset for the uh, controller itself, which is all well and good. Let's save it, go back to 3D scene here, thing like that. Let's just add a node 3D, let's add a colli collision shape 3D. And let's give this a capsule new. And let's actually do add resource. Um, let's do a mesh instance 3D and we'll also drag in a capsule mesh just so that we get a bit of, a bit of visual representation of that. Okay, now let's go to main and we'll drop our character in there on main and we'll put it above our world like this. So if we press play now and we'll select the current scene to be our main scene because currently we're in main, so select current, uh, we should see that we fall right through. Oops, I forgot one thing, I forgot a camera. Uh, let's actually attach the camera to our character here. So we'll add child node camera 3D and we'll just put it a little bit on an offset behind. We can even preview it while we have it selected. If you want to preview and move at the same time, just go to view two viewports and then preview in this one and edit in the other. Okay, so now I'm just going to save character and press play. And I should now have a camera. And as you can see, we're falling through our floor. Why is that? Well, we don't have any collision set up on our level. Now, Godot, as of 4.1.1, has a nifty little feature when exporting. You can append postfixes to the objects to actually auto-generate um, coll collisions for you. For example, and we're doing this pretty roughly, by the way, I do want to note. Let's do the floor first. So I'm just going to duplicate the floor. Now we could do Shift D, but I'm actually going to use Alt D in this instance. Alt D basically duplicates the mesh data so that if I was to make any changes to floor in terms of the mesh, it would be updated in the floor.001. In fact, we're going to call this floor, actually let's call it co Cole, which you don't need to. This is just for my own sake and floor. Now, this is the part that you do need. You do need a dash and then call again. And then you could say only. So collider only. And basically that will mean it won't render the mesh at all. So call floor, call only. And we can actually put this into its own collection. So if I press M for move, new collection, and say, let's say coals for colliders, I can then deactivate or activate this if I want to hide or show it while I'm editing, or I can just simply hide that entire uh, collection, but using the tick just to clean up the outliner here in Blender. For now, I'm just gonna use the I to hide it because I actually wanna keep it in the scene so I'll keep that tick on. Let's do the same for the object here. Shift D, oops, Control Alt D, excuse me, M for move, coals. Let's name this coal 
ob call only. Again, we could really optimize this where we're, we're only using one collider object. But for now, I just want to show you just um, what this postfix is actually going to do. So um, now that we've done that, we're going to leave this one here. The reason I'm going to leave it is to show you that this one won't work when we export it back into Godot. So file, export, GLTF, level, and we want to include everything. So export, let's pop back into here. We'll let it run. And already we're seeing that there are some colliders. Very nice. So if we press play now, I am here and I can move it around with my mouse buttons. Let's add a bit of light to this as well. We'll add it into level, in fact. So let's go here and let's add a plus. We'll say light and we'll add, not a light map, excuse me, light, Omni light 3D. Now to see a light representation in your 3D viewport, you just want to turn off the toggle sunlight view and toggle environment like so, and you'll see the proper lighting. So now we'll just add a bit of light into our scene. Let's maybe add one here. We'll duplicate this with just control D and add another here. Something really basic. Let's press play. And currently I'm using my arrow keys. So this one should have a collider. This one should not. Perfect. And again, we've just iterated this from Blender, which is just lovely. Um, let's do a little bit more, shall we? Just as an example. Let's now say, okay, well, I want, whoops, what am I doing? Let's say I want a coal on this one. Let's alt the it. M for move, coals, let's call it coal ob2, coal only. Wonderful. Now, because we have used a linked duplicate, so alt D instead of control D, uh, sorry, shift D, um, we can now edit these without having to worry about the colliders. Notice when I go into edit mode for this object, the edit mode for the corresponding collider also activates. And that's just due to the fact that the mesh data is linked. It's the same mesh data, so it's going to be a duplicate of one another. So we can now make this, for example, far more shallow to create a bit of a platform that one can step up. Now, if I wanted to, I could duplicate this again and make a little, little step for example. Um, another thing that we can also do is we can actually parent these together. Uh, let's actually just drag that under there while holding shift. That should work a little nicer in this example. There's just so many different variables that one has to take account of when using Blender. If you are just learning Blender yourself, I highly recommend heading over to polyfable.com by the way. Uh, it's a platform that I designed for storytellers to help bring their stories to life by learning the skills needed in order to breathe life into your tales with 3D. But I digress. Let's get back to this. So I now have the col uh, the collider underneath ob. I'm going to select the hierarchy, copy and paste. That should give me a new collider, which I can then put into the coal. It's still going to be referenced underneath the ob002, but it will be grayed out because it's in this coals collection. The reason why this is nice and good is I can now move this object and this coal here, if I was to showcase it, uh, oops, showcase it, it should be in the exact same place as its parent. So let's go file, export, GLTF, level, export. Oops, I want to make one thing. I almost made a big error there. I need to get rid of this. And we'll just, again, we'll give it a, a pretty generic name for now. This is not how you want to go naming these, by the way. This is just for the tutorial's purposes. 
file export GLTF level export and we'll pop over to Godot and there it is so if I press play I should be able to jump up onto these steps wonderful and we have ourselves the beginning of a game so I hope that this tutorial was able to showcase a way that you could potentially go about using Blender and Godot together. There is another, well, a few other ways to go about doing this. For example, using the Blender um, add-on within Godot itself, which will basically read a .blend file and use the .blends uh, GLTF exporter directly. Uh, that is another way. And if you're interested in learning about that, give this video a like and a comment below. It really helps the channel out and helps support me by just telling YouTube, hey, this was this was not too shabby. But yeah, I hope that you're able to take away a few points from this. If you're wanting to even further support the channel's development, head over to polyfable.com and consider a subscription there where you'll gain access to a lot of other content and even a direct line to me in terms of feedback. So thank you so much for watching and I hope that you have a very pleasant rest of your day or night wherever you may be.